experiencing a high level of turbulence on our descent through the atmosphere. Do not be alarmed, this is quite normal when approaching the Earth. If you look out of your left window, your right window, you will see disused satellites and a variety of other space junk. Please keep your spouts and handles safely within the pod. Space is vast emptiness. Quadrillions of meters cubed that have nothing in them. Well, nothing that you can see anyway. The vast emptiness close to the Earth is actually quite crowded. There are literally thousands of tons of junk just beyond the reach of the atmosphere of Earth. Most of the junk really is junk. It's pretty expensive to put something into orbit. Even if an entrepreneurial bin man decided that Earth orbit was the best place to dump unwanted sofas, washing machines, fast food wrappers and milk bottles, the cost of sending them there would make it cheaper to convert it all to hydrogen and pump it into a fusion plasma. Once in the air, a rocket, saucepan or other flying machine must have sufficient kinetic energy to escape the gravitational pull of its closest massive neighbour, in this case the Earth. To do that, it must travel faster than a critical velocity, called the escape velocity. If it doesn't, it'll come back down to Earth with the same force that it left. If it travels much faster than the escape velocity, it'll leave the Earth and never return. If it travels at exactly the escape velocity, and also leaves the Earth at a particular angle, which isn't straight up, it'll neither come back down nor fly away, but go into orbit. Of course, the practice of doing that in one swift motion is actually quite difficult. As low-tech as it looks, the methods humans use for getting things into space have stayed virtually the same for over a hundred years. They have refined their methods significantly, but it still involves strapping the satellite telescope, animals or people, to a rocket, then filling the rocket with a large amount of critically controlled explosives and lighting a match. Once in the air, the rocket actually follows a curved path. This is because no rocket can ever be perfectly manufactured. There are imperfections in the way the thrust is aligned with the rocket, the aerodynamics of the body, local atmospheric turbulence, the pull of Earth's gravity, drag of air resistance and, of course, lift. All contribute to making the flight incredibly unstable. The space junk in Earth orbit is actually an expensive byproduct of sending even more expensive equipment into space. It is so difficult for them to get objects past their atmosphere, they can't afford to worry too much about what happens to those byproducts afterwards. While we initiate our human abduction program, please can we ask you to remain securely in your places. The humans startle easily and can be a little rude if you interrupt their tea breaks. When we launch, say, a satellite into space, it has to go up on a rocket, uh, or s something similar, but pretty much rockets are the best way to get up there. And they release the satellite when they're up there, and then so you've still got this rocket left over. And so you can either turn that rocket round and bring it back down through the atmosphere to Earth, uh, which you might think could be dangerous, um, or you could just leave it. And for, for a long time, people have just not worried about it, and they have just left rocket stages, different stages of rockets fall away as the rocket goes up to make it lighter as it goes along. Um, and they've left the, the stages of rockets up there. There's also old things up there. So let's say back in the 60s and 70s, people wanted to, to know what they could do with, with satellites and uh, uh, other objects that they could put into all the machines. But once they're done using them, generally they, they leave them up there because to bring them back down would require either extra fuel to begin their descent, or at least extra weight and equipment that would help them come back down in the right place or in the right way. The humans have launched approximately 6,000 satellites into space over the last 50 years. As well as satellites, they also launch probes going to other planets, their sun, comets and other bodies in the solar system. From time to time you'll be able to catch a glimpse of a human in one of their rather crude space shuttles or their space station. Humans estimate that there are roughly 100,000 objects in orbit around the Earth at varying distances. A quick scan with the teapot omni sensors show that there is something closer to a million objects, consisting of jettisoned space parts, nuts and bolts, solar panels, abandoned or dead satellites, paint flecks, nuclear reactor cores, spent rocket stages, solid fuel fragments, an astronaut's glove and a grease gun. Once it started getting more than a little crowded in Earth orbit, the junk smashes into other bits of junk, making more and more junk, with ever-decreasing sizes. 
This is bad news for the new satellites and recently operational satellites that have been hit by dead ones. As soon as humans could reliably put a satellite in orbit, their astronomers have been very keen to put their telescopes outside the atmosphere of Earth. Earth's atmosphere blocks quite a lot of radiation, like X-rays, ultraviolet and cosmic rays, which is rather good for humans because they'd quickly be barbecued by them. The atmosphere also stops them from seeing all of the universe, and because they can't travel to distant supernovae, galaxies or nebulae like we can in teapots, they launch telescopes out of the atmosphere so they can at least study them better. Occasionally, they launch a telescope into orbit not around the Earth, but around their Sun. In 2009, the humans, with a little help from the European Space Agency, are launching two such telescope satellites to a Lagrangian point in space, where they can safely orbit around the Sun a short distance away from the Earth. These two telescopes are called the Herschel and Planck Space Observatories. The humans are obsessed by the nature of the universe and endlessly question each other about whether there was a Big Bang, did the universe inflate faster than the speed of light for a tiny fraction of a second, does dark energy exist, will there be a big crunch at the end of the universe, and who ate the last custard cream? Planck will be scanning the sky at incredibly high resolution, by human standards, so they can learn more about what is called the cosmic microwave background. This is the tiny whimper left over from the universe when it was very young. In fact, when it just became cool enough for matter to allow photons out. Until this point, photons bounced around like little figments of a cosmic pinball machine. Both Herschel and Planck will look at thermal light. Herschel will be looking at a type of infrared light that's close to radio waves. Human eyes can't see infrared radiation, but they're still capable of feeling heat on their skin. Every object, even ones we think of as being cold, such as ice cream, shines infrared radiation but not as much as ones which are hotter. It's not practical to make telescopes out of ice cream, partly because they'd melt, but mostly because astronomers are quite greedy and would eat them. I'll let the abducted humans tell you more about Herschel. When astronomers are making observations, they only go into space when it's absolutely necessary because uh, everything is much more expensive and much more difficult. And the reason we have to put Herschel in space is that we can't see this radiation from the ground. It's uh, absorbed by the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, the Earth's atmosphere is also very bright itself at these wavelengths. Um, it's a significant distance away from the Earth and it always orbits such that the Earth is always between the satellite and the Sun. So it takes one year to orbit the Sun in one go, unlike the Hubble, which orbits the Earth. Herschel orbits the Sun with the Earth. Um, <clears throat> the reason for that is that you want to be quite a significant distance away from the Earth itself um, because the Earth itself is glowing like a, red, you know, a very bright light. The Earth is like a Sun in the visible, essentially. Aren't they good? It's a pity we can't keep them. Matron, prepare them for mind wiping. <laughs> Sorry twins, there is gravity in space. The gravity of the Earth feels weaker when you're in space, but it's still there. Otherwise, satellites would fly away instead of being in orbit. When you're in space, there's actually a lot of gravity. There's the gravity from the Sun, from the Earth, from the Moon, and all the planets. And really, there's no difference between space and the surface of the Earth. Space is just a little bit further away. As you can see, the humans have been very busy, but at least not all of the craft they put in space is junk.